G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel as we continue another off-season series where I'm going through each of the 18 clubs and this time I am doing a bit of a New Year's twist on it where I'm coming up with resolutions for each club that they want to achieve in 2024 that will ultimately make them a better side. I have gone through reverse alphabetically uh, once again, so I started with the Western Bulldogs and today we're doing the North Melbourne Football Club. Now the North Melbourne Footy Club have obviously had a uh, disappointing stretch in terms of on-field performance, uh, narrowly of Avoiding the wooden spoon in 2023, which I suppose you know is improvement in itself. They won an extra game this year. Their impro uh, percentage improved by 16%. However, it's still probably a fair way short of where they really want to be as a football club. So I've isolated in this video eight things, I think, that I think if they, they improve on these things, it will ultimately lead to greater success in the future. If uh, you want to find more North Melbourne content, I have done a video analyzing their best 22 for 2024 as well as looking at what their best 22 might look like in three years from now. And I'll leave those as a little clickable icon at the top right of this video if you want to go find that content. As an aside, if you enjoy your footy content generally, I'd really appreciate it if you did subscribe to the channel. We got about a thousand and a half new viewers over the last week uh, and only a hundred subscribers out of that lot. So. If you are enjoying the content, it would mean a lot to me if you did subscribe. So let's work through some New Year's resolutions for the North Melbourne Football Club. And I've uh, picked out eight and they're not really in any particular order. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is goals outside of Nick Larkey. So Nick Larkey obviously had a, an amazing breakout year this year. In the year he turned 25, I believe, where he kicked 71 goals in a side that obviously narrowly missed the wooden spoon. And he earned an All-Australian jumper for that, which is in itself a, a fantastic achievement. And uh, it came at a time where Cam Zerha missed a bit of football and avenues to goal weren't really obvious. Nick Larkey full, fully realized his potential and kicking 71 goals in the modern game. It's, uh, it's not an easy feat. One thing I'll highlight though is that uh, the obvious downside to that was that they probably lacked other avenues to goal outside of Nick Larkey. So one thing that they could do to improve in 2024 is find more uh, reliable avenues outside of him. So Jaden Stevenson was the second highest goal scorer with uh, 26 for North Melbourne this season. Outside of that, Cam Zerha, who played just the 16 game, kicked 20 goals. So that's their top three, 71, 26, and 20. So finding uh, another way to score goals in 2024 is a really good place to start. The next resolution I have is getting a fit George Wardlaw. Now, George Wardlaw emerged to be one of the uh, more, most exciting inside mid prospects in the comp at the moment. And there's some, some good names in that mix. But that being said, just with his, his nature as a sort of slightly smaller in and under midfielder who's got explosive athleticism, absolutely hunts the footy, wins clearances already for an 18-year-old. He played just the eight games this year. And I think uh, as far as their midfield talent goes, he could just about be the best one that they have under 24 years of age. So considering that immense potential, it would be great if he could play more than eight games this year. I understand he's got some hamstring injuries uh, or hamstring injury history rather, but he had 14 and a half disposals a game this year and won four clearances a game as well. So to average that amount of clearances as an 18 year old is very, very solid going. And I think long-term projects as a key component of a midfield that will take North Melbourne into finals and beyond. So in an ideal world, we'll see George Wardlaw play you know, 20 games of football this year. The next resolution, which is just as important as any other one I'm going to mention in this video, uh, and that's to probably unearth a, a genuine key position defender that they can hang their hat on this year. So obviously we know Ben Mackay's left the club and that's exacerbated by the fact that Griffin Logue is going to be missing, I think, half the season with an ACL injury at the moment, which leaves their tall defensive stocks quite exposed. And they did somewhat move to, uh, to fix this in the off season by uh, recruiting Biggie Nguyen and Toby Pink as well as a delisted free agent. There's also talk that Charlie Combin is now going to be playing as a key position defender. So as far as I can tell, their, their key position defensive stocks to start, their best 22 will likely consist of Combin and Core. Uh, bearing in mind, Logue will probably um, re-enter the fray in the second half of the year. So uh, when you just consider the fact that Combin's only played nine games, Toby Pink, uh, he is 25, but he's also yet to debut at AFL level, despite being on Sydney's list before. Biggie New on as well has just played the one game. Then there's Callum Dawson, another candidate for this role, who's played the five games at AFL level. So I guess the biggest resolution is find one player out of that lot who can hold down a tall defensive 
position for the first half of the year until Lowe gets back, because that would be a great outcome. If they get someone, then they can build legitimate depth around. But otherwise, I do see this as a genuine vulnerability for North throughout 2024. The fourth resolution I have is also based around getting an injured player fit, and that is Luke Davies Uniac. Now, Luke Davies Uniac did play 14 games this year, but in an ideal world, as what I would say is their best player, um, even, even factoring Nick Larky, I think LDU has the potential to be their best player and an absolute top-line midfielder. And I mean, has the potential to win the Brownlow medal in 2024 if he can play a complete season. This year, uh, in 2023, that is, he played 14 games, won 13 Brownlow low votes, but I particularly remember the early stage of this season uh, when they played against West Coast in particular, and again against Fremantle, I reckon, in, in Optus Stadium as well. LDU just looked a class above everyone else. Therefore, getting him fit and firing for, let's call it 20 games, I think that's realistic, would be a great start to seeing North Melbourne improve in 2024. So let's talk about what the, the pass mark, I suppose, for North Melbourne would be. Maybe not a pass mark, but what what, what they'd be aiming for in wins and losses and, and being competitive and that sort of stuff. So I'd say a, a the resolution would be to try to aim for four to six wins because that would be an improvement on both of the previous two seasons. Despite the fact that they did improve in both of these metrics this year, North Melbourne obviously probably wish they had um, developed more and improved more. I think that's fair to suggest. That being said, four to six wins with the list that is currently 18th for age and 18th for games experience. That would be a, a fairly acceptable improvement in Clarkson's first year at the helm, which moves to a, a sort of a, another sub-resolution, which is to be more competitive. And what I mean by that is this, this is able to be measured in you know overall percentage. So in 2022, North Melbourne's percentage was 55.8%. And in 2023, they did improve it by 16% to 71.5%. So some pretty acceptable improvement there. Although they should continue to keep setting the bar higher for what they can achieve next year. So if that can be pushing 75 to 80 and they finish the season with between four and six wins, I think that would be you know a genuine success of a season. It has to be said with the amount of developing talent they have on their list. So that's putting numbers on their expectations try and avoid the bottom two and improve that percentage. Another great outcome for 2024 for North Melbourne, I think would be getting some genuine impact from their mature age recruits in Zach Fisher and Dylan Stevens. Now, uh, they obviously recruited a couple of mature age players in Tucker and Logue last year. Logue, I think, had a reasonably good impact before his injury. Darcy Tucker sort of has become this fringe player. So if they can exceed what they got out of those two with guys like Zach Fisher and Dylan Stevens as genuine best 22 players who improve their best 22, I think that would be a huge win. Dylan Stevens. Former top five pick, played 13 games in 2023 for the Sydney Swans for just the 13 and a half disposals. And Fisher played 12 games, averaging about 21. And I think what both of these guys add is something that North Melbourne have previously lacked, and that's some outside class and, and pace and polish as well. So Fisher, I think, will line up likely on a halfback flank, and Stevens presumably on the wing. And so they do slot into this team. Uh, filling positions of need, that's for sure. So all in all, getting some genuine impact from the mature guys on their list while the younger guys develop, uh, that is absolutely a desired outcome for North Melbourne here. And finally, the eighth resolution is around Harry Sheasel and just the, dealing with the prospect of getting more attention, um, negative attention that is, in 2024 from opposition players. So um, naturally, we saw Sheasel drafted as a forward, turn into a halfback flanker, became an absolute jet of a halfback flanker, winning their Rising Star Award, making immediate impact. I'll never forget his debut against the Eagles in round one. He averaged 27 disposals, five rebound 50s a game, 439 meters gained, and his efficiency was just a tick under 80% as well. So overall, absolutely nailed the role. Uh, that being said, I think with an expanded profile, we'll now naturally uh, receive a little bit more attention from opposition coaches who will probably try and limit Sheasel's impact. So watching how he develops to try and uh, mitigate that will be interesting. We've seen with Nick Dacos, you know, as much as opposition coaches try and play in for him, it's pretty hard. And Sheasel... You know, I think he's very, very talented too. So again, I sort of earmarked the possibility that we see Shees will move back to the forward line. But again, that's kind of just based on a personal hunch and it might not be this year. And either way, I actually think maybe Shees will another year at half back considering what North Melbourne's list needs are or their best 22 needs could make sense. But either way, he's definitely going to be targeted by oppositions. Anyway, that's just my take on North Melbourne and what they want to achieve in 2024 from a resolution point of view. As always, I'm open to your criticisms and constructive comments. So let me know in the comments what you think I got right or what you think I got wrong. And of course, if you're a North Melbourne fan, let me know any other resolutions you can think of. But for now, I'll thank you for watching the video. I'll thank you for being subscribed and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.